Does this sound familiar to you? You started a weekend project, all fired up to ship your next startup idea to the world. But 30 minutes later, you caught yourself scrolling through Instagram, lacking your friends' vacation photos instead. So much for being the next Elon Musk. How about the time you decided not to clean up your room just because you didn't feel like doing it right now, and you ended up binge-watching on Netflix instead? Did I just catch you nodding over the screen? Gotcha. <laughs> If you relate to the situations I've just mentioned, feel no shame. Everyone procrastinates, including myself. Life can be stressful and tough at times. I totally get it and feel you. There will definitely be times when you lose motivation, start procrastinating on your tasks, which makes things even more difficult and stressful. I know, I know. And let me just say, this is totally normal. You may think of procrastination as a very modern phenomenon and one that has come into its own in the age of the internet. But let me tell you, human beings have been procrastinating for centuries. Yes, you heard that right, centuries. The problem is so timeless that ancient Greek philosophers like Socrates and Aristotle coined a word to describe it, akrasia. Akrasia is a state of acting against your better judgment through weakness of will. It is when you do one thing even though you know you should do something else. Like you know you should be saving your money but instead you bought that new iPhone 14 Pro Max instead, right? <laughs> I know one, okay? Now, here's a modern definition by James Clear, the author of my favorite books of all time, Atomic Habits. Procrastination is the act of delaying or postponing a task or set of tasks. So whether you refer to it as procrastination or acrasia or something else, it is the force that prevents you from following through on what you set out to do. Okay, is it definitions and all are great, but why do we procrastinate? Well, from my observation and personal experience, I would say there are four reasons to it. One, you find it hard to concentrate on a single task. Two, your work environment is full of disturbances. Three, your tasks are mundane and boring. And four, you get distracted easily. And speaking about distraction, a research from the UK's telecoms regulator, Ofcom, reported that people check their smartphones on average every 12 minutes during their waking hours, with 71% saying they never turn their phone off and 40% saying they check them within 5 minutes of waking. How to get tasks done this way? Lah? Here's another wake up call. Based on a research piece by the London School of Economics and Political Science, every time you pull away from a project to check your phone or Twitter feed, it takes 1,395 seconds or over 23 minutes on average to regain your focus. And I'm pretty sure you don't only check one app, you would go back and forth from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube to Instagram, TikTok, etc. And the scrolling is endless. Literally, you could have doubled or tripled your income by working a side hustle, starting a business, whatever. But instead, a lot of us are subconsciously wasting precious time just scrolling through mindlessly and by the time we pull away from it, we would just be sucked back into the reality to do some really boring stuff like doing house chores, buying groceries and whatnot. So why do we procrastinate that much? Well, one of the biggest factors I say contributing to procrastination is the notion that we have to feel inspired or motivated to work on a task at a particular moment. It's like if there's no inspiration, then you are motivated to just be a zombie and stare at your phone for hours and hours. It's mind-boggling when you come to think of it. But the reality is that if you wait until you are in the right frame of mind to do certain tasks, especially the not so fun ones, you will probably find that the right time simply never comes and that results in, you guessed it, the task never gets completed. But give yourself some credit, if you are still watching here, you are probably motivated to make a change and that's good. Change happens one step at a time and you are already taking the first step, good on you. So why did I feel the need to improve my productivity? You may ask, I should just chillax and enjoy my life, right? No, fuck that. Ain't nobody got time to wait for retirement at 55. Ain't nobody got time for that! I'm not interested in going into the office for my entire life. There was a point in my life where I was working up to 16 to 18 hours a day. I remember back when I started this YouTube channel back in June 2020, I was still juggling it with two other part-time freelancers. Basically, video editing for a corporate and managing an Instagram page for someone else. On top of cooking my prep meals for diet. YouTube. 
juggling it with my social relationships, all on top of my 9 to 6 job. It was insane and man, it's easily one of the toughest periods of my life. And as time progresses, my YouTube channel gets slightly larger and it's only natural that everything starts to build up. There were days where I had to function with just 4 hours of sleep. I had too much to handle for one person. And deep down within me, I knew there's a better way to fix this. And so I went down the productivity rabbit hole and just gobbled up hours and hours of videos from Ali Abdal, Matt Diavella, Jeff Su, Thomas Frank, all of them. So how did I overcome my piling workload you ask? I implemented the task batching technique. Yes, you heard it right, task batching. If you have never heard of task batching before, let me explain. Task batching is the act of batching similar tasks together and doing them all at once rather than addressing them sporadically throughout the day. The purpose of this strategy is to avoid context switching, aka mentally jumping back and forth between tasks, something I think that most of us are guilty of. I'm pretty sure we subconsciously try to implement task batching in some way or another. For example, we would dream of sitting down at our desk each morning to plow through our new emails and get lots and lots of uninterrupted focused time to work on all the necessary tasks and work on the next million dollar startup. But realistically, that's almost impossible. Distractions are everywhere from phone calls and app notifications to emails and WhatsApp messages and not forgetting some of your chatty co-workers that love to gossip. Oops. It's all too easy to find yourself coming back to a task 10 minutes later wondering where you got started. Hence why the aim of task batching is to break this cycle. Here's why task batching is well worth your time. First, it promotes deep work and focus. With deep work, it allows you to learn challenging things and produce quality work quickly. It's a term created by Cal Newport, a computer science professor at Georgetown University. He defines deep work as professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. Task batching allows your brain to filter out distractions and only look at the task in front of you so you can work on it with your brain's maximum potential. This can help you both get into deep work mode and stay in it once you are there. Secondly, again, it minimizes context switching, which in turn decreases burnout. Picture this, imagine your workday as a hiking trail. When you are focused, you can stay on the trail and move to your next destination as planned. But when you are distracted, you may stop and wander off the track to look at the flowers, look at the river and end up being beaten by the leech. And after all of that, you still have to go back to the trail and continue moving forward. And at that point, you might have forgotten what you should do next. This is what happens when you have to constantly switch tasks. It can be very hard to see how far you have traveled if you are continually veering off the path. The same is true for your work. Identifying how much work you completed when you are constantly multitasking is absolutely challenging. But when you separate your tasks into working blocks, say 30 minutes of replying emails or 30 minutes of research or 30 minutes of writing down the plan, it would then be crystal clear to both you and your team members exactly what you completed and what you plan to do for the upcoming days. And lastly, it saves you time. If you're having a hard time fitting all of your work into one single workday, task batching can help you to catch up and minimize procrastination. If deadlines are an issue for you, time blocks can also help to create a sense of urgency. Schedule yourself, say, 3 hours to work on a particular task and you die-die work on it by hook or by crook. This can help you get those more challenging tasks out of the way instead of putting them off until later. And as a result, you can enjoy more free time later. Isn't that awesome? In one of my past videos, I shared about the importance of taking charge of your time. Because if we don't schedule our time, then someone else will do it for us. We need to make sure we have time for our priorities before giving away our hours to someone else. But somehow, having specific time blocks throughout the day might not be the best approach for everyone. For example, you could establish a time block to work on project A from 8am to 10am, then project B from 10am to 12pm. But there are just certain days where you feel like inspired to work on project B more. But because you have a time block, your discipline tells you that time is up and you need to move on to your next time slot. So what would be the solution? Introducing team days, meaning having each day of the week 
or the work week dedicated to a certain topic or project. For example, for my YouTube channel, I have Mondays to Wednesday, I dedicate these days to do my research and content drafting. That also includes calls and brainstorming sessions with my team members. And on Thursdays, I usually deal with bookkeeping styles, business emails, all those admin works. On Fridays, I focus on content writing. This is when I finalize one of my videos and then that's also when I start to consolidate all the market research and analysis for my upcoming weekly market summary that I post on every Monday 7pm. And on Saturdays, I finalize two videos at once and film them at one go like right now and edit them later. I will then come out with thumbnails and SEO research for both of them as well. And yes, I work the whole day on Saturdays and if you guys follow my Instagram, you will know that Saturday is YouTube day for me. You just got to make these necessary sacrifices if you want to stay ahead of the game. And on Sundays, it's usually my off day but I like to use spare time to reply each of you guys' comments or DMs, settle some more admin styles and enjoy my day out with social gatherings or just go out for grocery shopping and whatnot. And yeah, that cycle pretty much just repeats because it's borderline impossible to make two videos every week none fail on top of a 9 to 6 job without following a schedule with full discipline. And if you ask me, only rest one day, enough me? Well, definitely not lah. But once you're in the groove and your brain sort of get used to it, you will no longer need that much me time as you would have thought you needed. I guess it's just our human nature to adapt and survive. It's definitely not easy at the start but it gets easier as time goes on. And did you know this concept is also used by former founder of Twitter and Square, Jack Dorsey himself. When people ask about how he can lead two large companies at the same time, he said, the way I found that works for me is I team my days. On Monday, at both companies, I focus on management and running the company. Tuesday is focus on product. Wednesday is focus on marketing and communications and growth. Thursday is focus on developers and partnerships. Friday is focused on the company and the culture and recruiting. Saturday, I take off, I hike. Sunday is reflection, feedback, strategy and getting ready for the week. He also works 16 hours a day but obviously he's a billionaire while I'm here making YouTube videos. <laughs> now of course, the way to get better at time management and task batching is also to review your existing process and just reiterate accordingly. So at the end of every week or two, I will reflect on what I've done in the week and see which parts were not completed nicely and see how I can improve on that. No fancy time models or frameworks, just reflect and reiterate accordingly. And of course, it's now easier because I have team members plus you guys constantly providing me feedback through the comments. I do read them all, so it's really helpful to let me know whether I'm doing things right or wrong and allow me to make the necessary adjustments so that the channel stays on the right path. And in order to stay relevant, I need to make sure the channel is growing, not just cruising and enjoying the dividends because I firmly believe that once you get comfortable, that's when your growth starts to stagnate. But yeah, not gonna lie, it's definitely rough in the beginning, especially when I started ramping up from one video to two videos a week on top of my gym sessions, cooking prep meals, nine to six job, all of them. It does take some grit and determination until I got used to it. But anyways, all said and done, do let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on task batching and team days and if it helped you in being productive. And if you have any productivity hacks up your sleeve, feel free to share them down here as well. I would love to learn that from you. And you never know, I might just make another episode on that and feature your tips and tricks. Do remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.